I'm going to be talking about keeping nano reefs cheap. Now, I know many people start up nano reefs, usually A, because they want one, or B, because they don't really have the money to start a full-blown reef. And I'm just going to be talking about how to keep the cost low and how I kept my cost low for my nano reef. Now, I'm not saying it's cheap, but it is effective some effective methods to keep the cost lower. So the first and most effective way to keep reef tank costs low is to buy used. Now, many people sell used tanks. Usually these are just people either upgrading or getting out of the reef hobby. And you can get these setups for pretty cheap compared to what you'd have to pay if you're buying it all new. And this will save you lots of money. The second thing that I'd call my secret method to keeping tank costs low is buying oversized hang on back filters. Oversized hang on back filters can save you a lot of money because you don't need to buy a wave maker if you do this. Now, on my tank, I have a Quiet Flow 50, I believe it's called, and it's rated for 250 gallons per hour. And it's designed for 50 gallon tanks. And I have this on a 5 gallon tank. Now, this gives me a 50 times turnover rate. And most people shoot for 20 to 50 in a reef tank. So, also, oversized filters, many of them are adjustable. So, you can adjust the flow in the tank. And this is great because allows you to ramp up as you need and they generally provide enough flow where you won't need a wave maker now the next great thing about oversized filters is you could fit an, an algae scrubber or a fugium into it depending on how you'd like to mod it this is great because it adds another way to remove nitrates and phosphates without water changes, reducing the frequency. Now, many now reefs depend solely on water changes, but adding an algae scrubber or fugium helps reduce the amount you need to perform. It also adds, for example, a fugium would also add more pods and life to your reef tank. Now, the next great thing about oversized filters is they don't take up much space in the tank. Now, I know one thing that people deal with is they want the smallest wave maker possible in the tank. The problem with wave makers, though, is that they obviously take up space in a tank which is already small, and you want to use as little space to your equipment as possible. So, this is the next benefit of using an oversized filter over a wave maker. That you don't have to worry so much about fitting all your equipment in the tank, reducing the clutter in the tank, and making it look like more clean design, I'd say. And now, oversized filters, you could also, gen most of the time, fit in a heater inside, which still reduces clutter even more, which is great because... As you know, your space is limited in a nano reef. My tank is 5 gallons. The only thing I have in my tank, though I couldn't fit the heater in, but the only thing I have in the tank is the filter and the heater that's in my tank. Now, it helps make the design look clean and doesn't make me really struggle in the aquascape to accommodate for the wave maker. Now, wave makers aren't bad. As that you could, especially expensive ones, you could do many cool things with them, especially as gyres changing direction. But in a nano reef, it's really hard to accommodate wave makers because of the space they take up. With the hang on back filter, you could, with the oversized hang on back filter, it produces the flow you need and also reduces clutter inside, especially if you are able to buy one with enough space to fit your heater in. Now, there's two over uh, filters that I'd recommend. Coral, called Coral Life Now. 
filter. And I believe it's designed for 30 gallon tanks. But you could use this on a nano reef to provide the extra flow. I believe it's 200 gallons per hour. And also has a built in skimmer and a spot for your heater. This is one of the examples where uh, the filter basically provides everything you need for your nano reef. Now, if you're like me and you just went with uh, oversized, regular oversized filter, now you can fit an algae scrubber in there instead of a skimmer, which is what I'm going to be doing for my tank. Now, I also run carbon in my nano reef. It's a pretty important safety precaution, especially when you're running a mixed reef. As uh, chemical warfare goes on between corals and the chemicals could build up and that's something you don't want. So I really recommend running carbon on reef tank as a safety precaution, especially in nano reefs since it's a small system and they could build up quickly if a coral is doing this because the system is so small. So I highly recommend buying carbon when it comes to setting up your nano reef. The next thing that is really expensive on reef tanks that many people want well, it's necessary is lighting. Now, what I have on my reef tank is a PAR 38. And this is what I'll recommend for uh, many people getting a reef tank out there. Now, this is a PAR 38 I use. I'll probably throw a link down in the description. 90 degree optics. It works, it's good, it grows corals. Now, I also have a DIY right here. Uh, the link on how I got it should be up here. And the link on what I did to modify it and the mods that have been done should be right there. Now, if you're buying a PAR 38, the only, the few negatives are, is one, that you need a fixture for it. Usually you could buy a clamp and clamp it onto the bank of the back of your tank. I use one in my 5 gallon, so you probably need two for a 10 gallon. And they're pretty good. They provide a lot of light for a low amount of wattage, and you don't have to replace them. The great thing about PAR 38s is they're easy to modify. All you need is a soldering iron, some solder, and some thermal paste, and you could modify your LED light for PAR 38s. Now, one thing you don't want to skimp on is water. I'd recommend buying an RODI unit, but since I don't have one right now, I use distilled water. You could also buy RODI water. Some local fish stores usually have it, and I believe sometimes Walmart. But either way, this is something you don't want to skimp on, either using RODI water or distilled water. And the reason is, you can add many unwanted trace elements from your tap water into your tank. This could lead to uh, problems with corals because of the high amount of elements that you don't want in there or it could just lead to large amounts of algae. You want to buy the big tubs like this and then since you don't need a lot at all that at a time and you can keep it fresher by keeping it closed I just move it into a smaller tub. So this tub is always fresh and then I just take from this smaller tub. So it goes bad when it has too much water in it. So as long as you keep it closed the reef crystals will stay fresh longer and you won't have to deal with uh, throwing them out. If anything, this bucket here is going to go bad and you can just take from the fresh bucket over here. The next thing that you don't want to skimp on when it comes to a reef tank is a refractometer. These are extremely important as it is necessary to measure your salinity whenever you're mixing salt to make sure that the salinity on your tank is good. 
and it's especially important in nanary since evaporation occurs quite quickly and affects the salinity by a large amount if left unchecked as evaporation is one of the main reasons why it's hard to achieve stability in a nano reef so i want you don't want to skimp on a refractometer now there's often hydrometers which you place in the tank that are used to measure salinity but these are often inaccurate and there's many things that could uh, skew the results which is why refractometers are the go-to method when it comes to measuring salinity and it's one of the things you don't want to skimp on so get a refractometer now the next thing I have is a test kit now these I'd say aren't 100% necessary. Now, what I mean by this is, when starting a nano reef, the first thing you need to do is cycle it. Now, many people use test skits to make sure it goes through the cycle, which is usually what nitrates, ammonia, and nitrite test kits are for, to make sure that your tank is fully cycled. And then they also use the nitrite test kit to make sure that there is not too much nutrients building up in the tank. Now, you can get one, but it's really not necessary if you know what you're doing. And what I mean by this is that as long as you keep on top of your water changes weekly, you don't need to make uh, regular tests with your water condition and if everything in your tank looks happy. Now, it is a good idea to get one because you can make sure that everything is going well. But if you stay on top of your tank, it should be fine. And your tank will tell you if your nutrients are high by seeing a, for example, lots of algae. If you see lots of algae, it usually means that your nitrates are high. So. It's not necessary, but it's a really good idea to get a test kit. Now the next thing a test kit you need is if you want large polyp stonies or small polyp stonies, is you need to test calcium and alkalinity levels. Generally, in a nano reef, you won't need to test this though, because your salt, let's say, for example, I'm using reef crystals, should be able to supply all the calcium and alkalinity needs in your reef tank. Now, if you have lots of SPS and LPS corals, then you're going to start have to testing for these elements. But right now, when you're just starting, let's say, you probably won't need to test for it as your water changes would be enough to make sure these levels are in check. The next thing I use to uh, keep tank costs low is quilt bedding. Now, many people don't think about uh, their filter cartridge costs, and many people often just buy what the manufacturer recommends. Now, this is a very expensive method. Well, for me, now obviously I'm Canadian and prices are quite different, but for me, this cartridge was like $18 for a pack of four. And they recommend replacing it, let's see right here. every four to six weeks and taking that fact that it's a reef tank which you're probably going to be replacing it much more frequently because you don't want nitrates to build up and it adds up quite quickly quilt batting on the other hand is seventeen dollars and look how much i get so for the pack price of four of these i get all this now the reason why I recommend this quilt batting also is it comes in rolls, so all you have to do is cut it up, and you got your filter media. Now, because it uses cartridges which slide in like mine, what I do is I just have a little roll in there, and I replace it quite frequently. I think every like five days or something like that, but I only use so little, and it's quite cheap. 
and this large. Now, another thing you could do is you could use reusable media. The problem with this, though, is that it tends to store up some of the stuff inside. Because you can't wash out everything that's inside of, let's say, the sponge that you use that is reusable. So this could be a problem for nano reason, which is why I recommend quilt batting. But if you have an algae scrubber on your nano reef, you should be fine because the extra nutrients that built up from uh, using reusable media could easily be removed by an algae scrubber. So a grand total of 670 Now I would like to point out that I didn't purchase some of these things at full price, but I'd also like to point out that I've purchased many other things that I currently don't use on my tank. So for example, I don't have an RODI yet, but I plan on getting one, which is why I added it to the list. So, minus 100, but I buy distilled water, so it adds up. And also, the filter. The Coral Life filter. I didn't pay full price. Well, that's not even the specific filter I have on there, but I didn't pull, pay full price for my filter. I also didn't pay for the light which was $32 right here I didn't pay for that and this includes taxes in Canada which is 13% also I ordered coupons which are not necessary now, this may seem like a lot of money to start a reef tank, but this is basically everything you need to sustain your reef tank for probably a year plus. Now, the RODI cartridge really depends on your tap water, but everything else, the salt could last for over a year, the fish food could last over a year in a nano reef. The filter, you're not going to have to buy anything new. Filter media don't need anything else the carbon is going to last easily over a year because we're buying everything you need in large quantities so you don't have to expend extra so it may seem like a lot initially but and there's w many ways to start reef tanks cheaper and there's many other things that i could have got for lower prices that aren't really mentioned in this video but if you're going for something a nano reef, it's gonna cost you seven hundred dollars, but seven hundred dollars for the whole year plus, not like seven hundred dollars just to start, and then maybe another thirty here, thirty there, a fifty here, fifty there. These are also Canadian prices which do not include discounts, which are pretty common on lots of fish products. Now, also remember that doesn't include livestock. That's a whole other story.